and almost crash the entire system. You can see as well, gross public debt. Stable till 1971, now it's went off the rails. Now this is just what the government admits to. This isn't including things like social security and all that kind of thing. You can see some of the craziness. This is from 2012 to 2018. It rose by $138 billion in 11 days after jumping up $1.27 trillion in 2018. And again, you see here, gross public debt. So what does this affect? Well, things that are financed. Other than the government, you can see it by 2008, tuition fees had increased 439%, while income had only went up 147. Healthcare, which is funded hugely by government and their policies. You can see e this is adjusted for inflation. Prescription drugs are out of sight. Hospitals, costs are just through the roof. And then you see here, this is sales price of new home. You could get a new home back in 1971 for about $28,000. That we was twenty eight thousand five hundred. Now the medium home, not in California, but nationwide, is three hundred fifteen three thousand three hundred. So why I'm showing you this is that debt has become the new asset, if you will. Before. 1971, we were on what was called the Bretton Woods Act of 1944. And that kept us partially tied to a gold standard. So the government could not allow the money supply to be produced out of control. The money supply was much more stable. And you can see back on some of these, where we look at before, you can see the public debt was very low because you couldn't just create money out of thin air. So it was a very stable. After 1971, Because there was no, the gold standard was eliminated, what happened is now we became a monopoly money society. And the positive of that was that now, there could be massive amounts of capital, like massive, which would fuel new houses, government spending, cars, technology. I mean, it fueled all, you know, anything you can imagine and, you know, company growth. So the capital was untethered to gold and it created a monopoly society. So the problem with that is that if debt equals the new like asset, if you will, it sounds so strange to say. And if somebody is working and trying to accumulate assets, 
their earning dollars, let's just say 100,000, they pay a tax, let's just say they net 70, and then they're trying to save their way to wealth. While somebody that is informed more of the debt-based society is essentially not saving their way to wealth. They use their assets to draw OPM or debt, however you want to say it, and they're growing that way. So it's a totally different situation. I mean, I always think of it like this. If you have a house and it costs, we're going to keep it simple, $100,000 to buy. If you were to go buy it in cash, you have to pay the 100000 plus the taxes to earn 100000 So if you're in a 50% tax rate, you'd have to earn 200000 to buy a $100,000 house in cash. Uh, secondly, you get no tax deduction. And basically, your money's tied up, money tied up, in-house earning zero. And if somebody sued you, that house isn't asset protected. Compare that to somebody that would buy this using debt. So this is paying cash. And this is debt purchase. If it's a primary residence, they can put as little as 3% down. If they're a VA, you know, like veteran, they could uh, even put zero down. But let's just say they put 20% down. So they would use 20,000 down payment. The 80,000 would be financed. Say at 5%. 4,000 in interest a year. They'd get a tax deduction. And they wouldn't have to save up to get it. They'd get the keys immediately. Compared to paying cash, what if it was a cash society like some other countries? A lot of people would never buy a home. So Bottom line is that. So, and because it's mortgaged up, it's asset protected. If somebody was sued and they had a mortgage on it, nobody wants a house with a mortgage on it. So this 80,000, if they had it in cash, could be actually earning interest somewhere else or buying, you know, as down payment for other houses. So the government, which is the worst abuser of the new debt-based system, incentivizes debt and penalizes income, cash. So, the beauty of it, though, is when you understand that it's a debt base, you understand the negatives, obviously, of there's a debt created, but what are the positives? The positives are you have access, access to capital 
to buy or not buy control assets. So when you switch over to debt, you could actually have, in this case here, instead of one house, you could have five houses. Live in one and rent out the other four. Then instead of having 100,000 asset growing, assuming it grows, you would have 500,000 growing. Four hundred thousand of which is debt, which is giving you tax deduction as well as asset protection. Versus this guy over here that just has his own home. That's it. Plus, you're receiving rental income that's paying off the debt or giving you more money to acquire even more. So if there was no debt, like everything had to be cash, all of the other houses wouldn't exist. You just have to save up to get your own house and that would be it. And just to give you perspective, back in the you know 30s, 40s, and 50s, a mortgage was only five to 10 years long and typically had a 50% down payment. How do you like that? So bottom line is when you understand that debt is the fuel of growth and you use it accordingly in your business, in your assets, what it does is create the ability to have multiple assets because on your own back before 1971 before they made it easy to get more and more dollars it was very difficult to earn an income pay taxes and somehow acquire assets so why is this important? Because 95% or more of society is programmed to view debt as bad. Unless they use it for their primary residence. Other than that, it's, it's the horrible thing. Which keeps them in the box. Because, as I said, it's very hard to save up assets. Doing it, earn income. What do they tax the most? Income. Take out your taxes to acquire assets. So this is why there's 95%. It's probably, you know, if you want to go to higher wealth levels, it's 99% still are operating under this. And one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people that have lived middle class for a long time, but worked really hard and now they're making great income is they still are operating under this assumption, which is still keeping them very vulnerable, very vulnerable. 
So anyhow, I hope that uh, answers some of your questions about debt.